Greetings, tribe, and welcome to the eighth and final part of the eight days of prey. Somebody cue Time of Your Life by Green Day. This has been an epic series, and today we're going to be taking a look at the DNA Design Upgrade Kit for Power of the Primes Predaking. I just checked Big Bad Toy Store, and there was a pre-order up for this, and it's sold out arriving in the third quarter of 2020. So it's nice that DNA is still making these. Might be able to find this elsewhere, who knows. I got this last year and I never opened it. I've been waiting until this moment, part eight of Power of the Primes, eight days of prey to open this, go through it and include all of these awesome upgrade accessories with the Predacons got a picture on the back of the huge sword and those beautiful feathered wings articulated feathers with Predaking and a picture of everything that's included each Predacon will have a sword now I guess one of them will have is this like a, a hatchet or a, an axe or a hammer something like that there's the wings there's the hands with articulated fingers there's that's a tail and uh, the cannons that go on the side to fill out his waist piece. It is quite a large box. There it is in relation to the size of Power of the Prime's Predaking in the back there. And it's, it's really nicely designed. It's a nice material, nice matte finish. Um, it's cool when third parties go the extra mile with the packaging. And uh, on the front here is not Predaking. Wink, wink. Open up the box and you've got a double tray in here and some paperwork it looks like. It comes with this little slip of paper that specifies how you're supposed to use this new piece for the shoulders in order to strengthen Predaking's shoulders, his ratcheting joints. So that's some nice clarification there. Some more paperwork. In here, this is nice. This is like official uh, Hasbro or Takara Tomy quality. Flip out instructions on how to install the pieces. And more on the back. Very nicely done. Now, there's uh, two layers to this. It's really cool. This was added in as an extra piece. It doesn't actually have a spot to go in either tray. And I'm informed that this was an extra piece, which is weird because of all of this stuff. I mean, the wings are cool. The sword's awesome. Although the crazy Devi sword is really awesome too. But like this was the piece that I wanted the most of this entire set. And to hear that this was like a bonus um, bonus uh, thrown in for like early orders. I really hope that this is included with the reissue um, when they put this back out and that's too bad uh, if some of these sets were released without this so I'd like to know more about the status of this. I hope that all of the sets came with this because that's an important part and also in the bag is this little piece that there's supposed to be two of them, so it looks like they forgot to include one. There's supposed to be two of these. They go into the shoulders, and um, unfortunately, only one of them. So uh, DNA, uh, if you've got a spare one of these, uh, that'd be cool. If you can uh, send me the missing piece here so I can uh, power up the shoulders of Predaking. All right, first tray, really nice packaging here. I love that. Really uh, will protect the pieces and the, the paint applications. So this first tray just has Dive Bomb's wings. Oh, this is great. It's really nice when these upgrade pieces are just like this. Just all assembled, no, no assembly required, ready to go. Really nice quality on it. 
Nice build quality. These are good, good articulation here. Uh, good grip on them. They're not flopping about. Really nice paint applications. And the second tray includes the sword, the, it looks like a hammer to me, like Mjolnir. Razor Claw's tail, that's a very important part to the hands. And these are the cross guards down here of the sword. And they could be used as daggers too, because it looks like the same post hole size. And here's a shot of all the goodies included. Really nice looking set. First thing we're going to do is assemble the sword. So this is really easy assembly. Just take this uh, hammer part and plug these two posts into here. And it's nice that it attaches with two posts instead of one. The size of this, it's not all that heavy, but it does have some heft to it. One attachment would be a, a breakage risk. Two is better. And that's probably the best way to do it. Just make sure you have a good grip on both and do the, the wiggle technique. Just slight back and forth wiggle. And same inside. Now, that looks really cool already. If you want, you can add the cross guards. And I wonder if there is a particular way to do this. And just twist that in there. Is that... I'm not sure if it matters. Oh, maybe it does. Yeah, the... The, uh, it looks like the posts aren't completely centered in here. See how this post is just a little lower and then you flip it the other way and now it's a little higher. So depending on your preference, you can twist them either way as long as they're lined up. This one it looks like it might be a little on the low side. So we'll just, I think this looks better this way. So you can add a cross guard, Kylo Ren style, to the sword. That is beautiful. Nice big hefty sword. Doesn't have the sheen of the Crazy Debbie sword, but I'm going to compare it with the Debbie sword in a, in a moment and see how it measures up. Other included accessories are new fists with lots of articulation. That's awesome. Wow. Hey, check this out. Oh, that's cool. These fingers actually have swivels on them. Usually these have ball joints, which a lot of the time cause the fingers to pop right out. This allows the fingers to point out a little bit without having to deal with it popping out. Do the little I love you symbol here or the Spider-Man web slinging. Lots of, lots of articulation here. Wow. Good knuckle joints here. Fantastic. So let's pop these new fists on. And to install them, all you got to do is turn the fist this way. And this just slides out nice and easy. Sometimes these upgrades can be a real nightmare. Because a lot of these parts aren't meant to ever come off. So sometimes there's having to deal with screwdriver and pulling and chipping or drilling. This is really easy. Uh, exact same type of connection point as the original one. They've followed it perfectly. This is a huge bonus in my book. I don't like to damage the toy when I'm installing these third-party upgrades. There's no damage here. Wow! Wow, what a difference! 
and I really, really love this new type of joint for the fingers. So much better than a ball joint. Oh, that's ferocious looking. That is such an improvement over this. Which, like I said in the, uh, the Predaking review, it's not bad, but it's not this. That's beautiful. Wow. Super impressive. Hey, check that out. I didn't even know about that. I Just pulling up on this. He's got a, uh, a wrist swivel now, too. So many cool poses you can do just with the hand now. Love that little claw on the, on the fingertip. You are next. That's fantastic. And we'll install the second one just as easy as the first one was. You want to just find where that joint is. And usually when I'm doing this stuff, one is easier than the other, but lucked out this time. They're both equally easy. It might be easier if you just remove it like I'm doing right now and slide it on. Hear a nice click. Wiggle it back on. On to dive bomb. Done, installed, super sturdy. Same posability as the first one. Nice tight joints, but not too tight that it feels like they're gonna break. And I wonder if he's got enough range, I think he might, to play around here a little bit. Let's see. Wow. He's got such incredible range here in his hands. Now, I wonder if you know what I'm trying to do here. Not quite enough range to do the nerd mistake with his hands, but he does have enough for the fireball Hadouken. All right, next let's install the new wings and these new wings look very similar, this part, to the original one, although it is a new design. Greatly inspired, but it's not an, uh, uh, a knockoff, a, a remold of it. And to install these, same type of idea as the fists. You don't have to unscrew anything, you just have to find this joint right here. And pop it off. Like that, look how easy that was. That was so easy. And you find the wing that has the same style of joint as the original one. Set that one aside. And we're just going to slide that in. Might be easier to slide it in from the bottom. Just kind of a twist and a wiggle until you hear a snap. And it's on, and it connects the same way as the original one did. This hole will plug into this post right here. Good movement on it. Feels great, great plastic, snug fit. Yeah, liking that. Install the second one, and we just wiggle and pull that one off. Take the second one and slide it on, click, plug it in, plug it in, pure, and it has the same type of connector as the original one did that just plugs into Razor Claw's legs on either side to line everything up. It feels like it fits better than the original one did. It plug, plugs in a little more securely than the original. So that's another improvement. Definitely feels more secure. Wow, that is beautiful. That is a huge improvement over size comparison. That right there. 
These really look small now compared to the DNA upgrade. They're just as articulated, like they, they have the same joint that the original one had. So you can drop them down a bit if you want. You can hike them up. But these feathers, look how spike feathers, look how far they spread out. That's fantastic. That's maybe a little too spread out, but just having a little bit of space in between them all. So awesome. I like the the big shiny gold chrome of the Crazy Devi upgrade for the G1, but this is the Feral Rex look. And that was one of the coolest things about the Feral Rex design. So having the power of the primes, Predaking with that particular look to them, just looks fantastic, beautiful. And we've got Razor Claw's tail to install, which doubles as kind of looks like a spinal column. So to plug that in, let's just take Razor Claw's legs here lift them up and luckily it doesn't look like I'm gonna have to take him apart completely to install this there's two little holes up here and there's two posts right here and these posts are different sizes so that makes it easy to figure out which one goes where the bigger hole is the one on the outside so we will just Plug that in like that and just give it a wiggle to get it in there. Nice. So this will then go inside, fill them out a little bit from the back. Oh, this is great. These parts kept flopping in, going in when I was combining Predaking over and over and over again. And they're supposed to connect in here. But they just don't hold. They keep popping out. So this tail slash spinal column has a third purpose too. With this post right here, it will plug in to these side flaps and keep them from trying to go in oh that's great fits perfectly and now those circuit glitch diode blown dim wittery panels are going to stay out you can actually grab him by the waist now when you're handling him and that's especially nice because we're about to install these pieces. And if these kept going in, that would make that very frustrating. So this is my most anticipated part of doing this. Let's see how these connect. We've got this little um, lip in here and it, it reminds me of uh, Tantrum and Headstrong the way their shoulder cannons connected. So these pieces look identical. I don't think it matters which one is left and which one is right. So let's slide that. I guess it slides onto the first one. And here's a better angle of it right here. If you, if you line it up properly, it should be yeah pretty easy. It's just a matter of lining it up properly and wiggle it on that's one and this one and that's two and we'll just flip these kitty feet up to show off these little Kind of look like jets makes uh makes this big dive bomb backpack part kind of a jet pack now and here is preda king all filled out oh that is awesome that's everything 
I hoped it would be just this tiny little bit and such an easy installation to make such a huge difference. And it's not just bulking him up. It's great that it looks like cannons. This guy is just weaponry from head to toe. He's got the shoulder cannons. He's got the front cannons. Got the arm cannon. Now he's got cannons that don't even shoot anywhere, but super dangerous looking guy. And this makes a big difference too, filling out his back now. That's beautiful. That's one of those things we didn't know we needed. But it's absolutely vital. And the gold is very important here too. Didn't know it was needed until seeing it like this. But you've got gold on the wings, gold on the shoulders of the wings. And now just this little bit of gold back here. Just really awesome. Awesome look to him. Now that that's all installed, time to give him the final weapon, the ultimate weapon. And a comparison of the two, holy smokes. So it's a trade-off. Do you want gleaming chrome or do you want blunt force drama? This thing is magnificent. And it looks like we've got this little post right here, which will secure into the hand right here. That's very important because this one does not have any way of securing. It just sits in loose. That's interesting. It's also got this, uh, I guess that's for whoever holds the ax in robot mode, but this will just plug in like this. And you do have to be mindful of where the fist is turned and wrap the fingers around the hilt to secure it. Wow, that that's amazing. This is such an impressive kit. That is just spectacular. I thought before I put it in his hand, this might be a little oversized because with the Jinbao, Oversized Feral Rex, as spectacular as that guy's sword is, it's oversized. But I think this is actually the perfect size for him. And now I'll, uh, I'll pop this sword into his other hand just so you can see them compared. Just uh, also curious to see how securely he can hold this Crazy Devi sword. Fairly securely, actually. That's that's nice and secure, just thanks to all of the uh, the articulation in his fingers. All right, so the Crazy Debbie Sword is still spectacular, even if it is smaller than the DNA Sword. But if you want two swords, wow! It's got a long sword and a short sword now. But this DNA Sword is beautiful. I like the uh, paint coloration here too in the hilt. That's an issue though. It's very heavy. So depending on um, how tight your Predaking's joints are, it might want to pop out. Let's see if the existing shoulder joints can hold this. Yeah, it's, it's holding. It definitely could use some strengthening, so hopefully I can uh, get that spare shoulder joint. I don't really want to just install one shoulder joint. I could definitely use some strengthening here because the sword is just a little bit too much weight. For something this big and bulky and heavy though, I think I'm going to be displaying him like this, just having him hold the sword with his other hand or even just hanging down at his side. And here's a 360 of Power of the Primes Predaking with the DNA upgrades. Wow, just ferocious looking. Beautiful. This to me looks like a masterpiece Predaking, not a Power of the Primes uh, price point, Predaking, just amazing. 
The sword is fantastic. Although I love the chrome on the Crazy Devi sword, this definitely goes with the gold type of paint used on the uh, wings and other parts of Predaking. There's always something to futz with. Every time I look at this guy, I think, move this here, fidget with that. This definitely is a display piece. In terms of playing around with him, especially with this upgrade kit, I think he's going to be a lot more finicky. Things are going to fall off. This fist is definitely going to fall off. So even with the ratchet strengthening, this is still going to be an issue because of how heavy the sword is. But if you just want him sitting on a shelf looking spectacular, this uh, upgrade kit is going to take a really nice looking figure and make him gorgeous. Now that we've got Predaking all suited up, upgraded, filled out, the fun doesn't stop there. These upgrade pieces can also be used for the individual members of Predaking as well. So now let's disassemble this guy and arm up the individual Predacons. All right, everyone's back in individual robot mode and this upgrade set doesn't just make your Predaking look fantastic, it gives you so many more options for each individual Predacon. Whereas before, it was really just bare bones weaponry, having to double up body parts like feet to use as weapons. Now you have the choice of what weapons you want to use, and you can even leave some stuff off to the side as well. Let's start off with Torox or Tantrum. The fists still fit in the bottoms of the feet. So that is a huge plus. And let's just see if it'll sit flat. How does this go? It helps if you have the right fist for the right foot. So that just pushes in just like the other one. It fits a lot more snugly than the original uh, included fists do and there is just a teeny tiny bit of this poking out over but that doesn't matter the fists won't be in there when he's in Predaking mode just for the sake of storing either if you're going to still use this as a shoulder cannon with this guy you can plug that into there and you can have the fist in behind there, filling that out, just being stored in there. Personally, now, thanks to this upgrade set, I won't be using these as shoulder cannons. I really don't dig how that looks. Instead, I'm going to be using... Each guy will get a sword or a hammer. And then I'm going to actually move around the weapons from how they're originally assigned. So first we're going to disassemble the sword, just wiggle this out, take off these side parts, I guess actually you could, you could leave those on there, that could be a heck of a weapon there, or even that, it could be like a pick. But for now, we're just going to pull those out. And then the sword. This disassembles so much easier than the Jin Bao oversized Feral Rex. It's impossible, almost impossible, to take uh, that sword apart. And it, the design is very similar to the Feral Rex. These just come off. And now you've got four identical, individual, almost identical, individual swords. Just taking a look at these, I can see that these two look identical. These two look identical. The only difference is these are a little kind of, you got the sharper tip to them. And these have a more blunt edge to them. So based on the body designs of these guys, I would think these would look better with the two beefy guys. But since one of the weapons is this hammer looking thing, it's got to be one of these two guys wielding this weapon. So let's just take this out. 
at the moment. I'll explain why that was in there in a minute, but I'm thinking maybe the rhino. This would this would be good for the rhino, for headstrong. It's got a different type of handle to it. Feeds like that, fits perfectly. Fantastic, and I'm just curious if it'll, it should fit on everybody. Yeah, there's, it works on everyone, but I kind of like this being the weapon of the Rhino of Headstrong. Powerful, blunt weapon that I think is very fitting of a Cybertronian Rhinoceros. It looks cool. So then we'll give one of the other swords, one of the blunt edged swords. I wonder, there's a hole in the front here. If you can, is that a thing? It is now, I guess. If you want to elongate one of these swords, you can. Looks kind of weird. Pull that out. And now Tantrum has a sword. Go into his squat pose so that he can handle his own girth. These swords aren't too heavy, so it doesn't seem to be much of an issue with the, these guys, at least this guy holding this sword. And then these extra pieces, I guess can be little daggers. If you want to arm them up extra, pop this guy back there, grab Rampage. This is where some of my weapon swapping is gonna come into place now. Rampage was using this gun because it's his tail, right? It's kind of a big looking gun for the smallest of the Predacons. So I'm gonna actually give him, I'm gonna see what I have left over for weapons, but I'm gonna give him one of these um, sharp tipped swords. It looks really big for him, but now he's got a sword. Move that over there and good old razor claw. Take this off, take that gun off, and give Razor Claw the other sword like Rampage has. He's got that sword now. And then, last one to arm up is, oh boy, Dive Bomb. We'll take his guns out and give him the final sword. So now all of the Predacons have swords as they should have. This guy is even more floppy, uh, wobbly because of the giant jetpack. But now that everyone has their sword, let's move this guy in the back here. I'm gonna get to decide who gets what weapon. So once again, I don't really care about the official designations. What I care about is what looks the best to me, what feels the most right to me. And I like how this yellow gun right here looks on Razor Claw. It goes perfectly with all the yellow, other yellow things on him. The gun that's officially assigned to him sort of looks like Razor Claw's G1 gun. That one was kind of oversized for G1 Razor Claw too. Uh, I much prefer this look right here. Like the yellow, just seems to go with them. It's still a double-barreled blaster, which is what Razor Claw had. So I'm gonna stick that with him. So that leaves a big beefy gun for the big beefy bot. And he's got two horns, this has two barrels. I think I'm gonna give him this gun. I guess you can turn it either way if you wanted to, but I'm going to put it in this way. And now I think that looks a lot better than this shoulder foot cannon. Arm him up there. And let's arm up the other beefy bot. I'm going to give him this cannon right here. This looks like it has some heft to it as well. You could go with the other yellow gun, 
Same reason with razor claw. The, the yellow goes nice with the other yellow parts, but this is kind of small for such a huge looking guy. So I'm gonna give him this big cannon right here. I think that looks fitting for him. Which leaves two guys, it's Rampage and Dive Bomb. Now unfortunately with Dive Bomb, he doesn't have any spots like the G1 version had to arm him up. There's no, unfortunately there's even on this upgrade set of wings, it would have been cool if there were some posts where you could just plug these guns in. You could drill, but I don't want to drill, so um, I think I'll just give him one of these guns. It's really tough to navigate him now with these especially enormous wings. And then give the other gun to Rampage, or try. Same problem as Rampage's uh, other gun, the official gun. It doesn't really sit in there all that well. This one probably sits in there better. Um, there's no yellow on Rampage. So it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, but actually that doesn't look too bad either. And because these two guys are so similar, I actually I like how that looks, giving them the identical weapons, which means we're left over with one gun right here. And there is a hole on one side of Dive Bomb. He doesn't have it on the other side for some reason. But it is on one side, so... I guess we could stick that in there if we didn't want this gun just laying around. To arm him up, I guess. Or you could go with the holes on his feet. He's got holes on either side of his feet, which are the proper... Actually, that doesn't look bad. I like that. Let's take this off. Let's give him uh, leg cannons on both sides. That's not bad, which leaves us with these daggers. So maybe if we stick one dagger like that, and since there is a hole on the other side of the fist, just pop it in the other side. And he's got, well, that looks kind of cool. Some kind of a dual bladed weapon. Hey, that's not bad at all. I wasn't expecting to be able to have everything deployed like this, but that worked out quite nicely. And if you're a real stickler for not wanting any parts set off to the side, or if you don't know how to use subspace and just make them disappear and then reappear, then you could still attach them to the guys they're supposed to go on. And now every single piece from the original Power of the Primes Predaking set, as well as the DNA set, have been applied, aren't off to the side, and it looks really good. I mean, I, I still don't like the shoulder cannons, but they're on there, they're being used, and these guys look even more ferocious and ready for battle than ever. And the DNA upgrade kits do affect two of the guys in their animal modes. Razor Claw now has a tail, which I'm gonna show you what it looks like in his lion mode, in his robot mode. Luckily, it'll just flip up like that. You don't have to deact, uh, detach it, stick it someplace else, or put it off to the side. It's nice that it just tucks up out of the way like that. I like how this looks, but if you want, you can open this up a bit and this post right here will actually plug into this hole right here just to secure it even more. It comes out a little bit further than I like it to and now you've got a hole in there. I'm thinking that's officially how this unofficial upgrade is supposed to go, but I don't mind how that looks. And let's see how he looks in lion mode now with a tail. 
And razor claw and... What the hey? Well, that's, um... That's an interesting <laughs> positioning of of the tail. Uh, he's kind of tucking his tail between his legs. Here we go. Let's try to stick it there. That's um, that's not exactly how I was picturing this was going to look. Um, let's try to detach this and see if there's any way we can. Attach it a little higher. I was imagining it was going to be up here. Um, you know, I think the only thing you can really do is maybe drill a hole, a couple of holes in the back right there so that you can have the tail coming out where it's supposed to come. Or, I mean, the tail shouldn't have this stuff on the edge of it, so... I'm wondering if there's any way to just have it be up here. Doesn't seem like there's a place where it can attach securely. It seems like that's how it should go. The gold kind of goes with the gold there. Um, yeah, I... I would prefer this, but there just doesn't seem to be any way to attach it. And looking inside here, I don't think there's any way to do it. You could just turn it around and put it in like that, I guess. Turn this up this way, and now he's kind of got the rampage thing where his tail can be a weapon. Phew. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad, actually. I, I prefer this over the the official way. Um, it's not secure, but it's definitely... This is better than this. This lion does not have a tail. So, yeah, I can live with that. That's, um, that's fine. I could try this way as well. I mean, that's part of playing with this stuff, futzing with it, seeing which way you like the best. Um, so yeah, he's sort of got a tail, but for some strange reason, it's, uh, it's kind of tucked between his legs, which doesn't exactly make him seem all that ferocious. And finally, Dive Bomb, who is really collapsing under his own weight. Just trying to move him around. He really wants to do the splits because of these huge, huge wings. You can sort of steady him a little bit using his wings as, as a stand. Since there is quite a bit of range in them, that helps a lot, actually. Uh, these wings might be too big for Predaking. So once again, if you know how to use subspace, then uh, I would just, if you're displaying them individually in their robot modes, I would just pop that off and uh, pop on the smaller wings for Dive Bomb. And give you a... Uh, a nice comparison look right here to show you good lord he doesn't he won't even uh, stand with with the big wings on but I think the smaller wings are the way to go for dive bomb and then just a quick easy swap for predaking mode and these upgrade wings don't have any faction symbols on them but they do have uh, conveniently cut out spots if you wanted to put a faction symbol. And it is a coincidence that this is in the shape of a, uh, of a Decepticon symbol. So if you've got some spare Decepticon symbols laying around, I've got some of these little extras 
that come with uh, Toy Hacks orders. So I thought I was done applying stickers, but I guess I've got a couple more to go. So uh, here's some Decepticon symbols on this new upgrade set. And let's take a look at him now in eagle mode. And these wings are like Dick Ebersol at a Saturday night's main event taping in the 80s. They're everywhere. So you gotta be kind of careful when you're transforming him. All right, eagle mode. So you be the judge. The, uh, the extra huge wings. Is it an improvement? Are they too big? Just uh, at first glance, well, the, the standing is gonna be even more of an issue in eagle mode than it was in robot mode. These feet really wanna just come apart, but one little ratchet there helps. That's not as oversized looking. In his eagle mode, I think the, the giant wingspan actually looks really nice. They're so huge. There's not uh, much grip on the one side for posability, but I think that added wingspan actually looks a lot nicer than the smaller ones. And the feathers, especially nice for eagle mode, being able to spread them out. Really, really nice. So, yeah, it's kind of peculiar. In robot mode, I would go with the original wings, but in eagle mode, I, I would stick with these. The feathers make a big difference. For the sword, uh, I don't know where you could put it. These, I guess, could be put in where I had the guns in robot mode. I don't want to push them in too far, but I guess you could stick them in there as some sort of blade-like weapon that he could swoop down and slice people with. The sword, you might be able to find a place to plug it or clip it. There's, there's quite a few um, places that you might be able to clip it. I don't know. Personally, I'm, I'm just going to go the subspace route and leave it in subspace until I need it again. And that wraps up the Eight Days of Prey, Power of the Primes Predaking series. Thank you all so much for watching. I've really enjoyed being able to take a closer look at these guys, play around with them a bit, come up with some alternatives to the official setup, transformation, weapon assignments. But for now, it's back on to some toy history videos. So look for those coming to the channel very soon. Thank you to the Patreon tribe for providing the channel Patreon power. A warm welcome to our newest Patreon tribe members, Timothy Romans and Joseph Gordon. And a thank you to Gojitron, Jason Horn, Andrew Culver, Sean Gurton, Scuba Pete, Bob Hansen, Chris Miwa, Adam Hurt, Tristan Miller, Joe, Stephen Shin, Eric Griffin, Vince, Michael Choi, Michael McTie, Gaz, Carl Hanks, and Justin Maybe for sharing your collection picks on the community wall on Patreon this past month. Thanks, good brothers. Really enjoyed seeing your collection picks. If you'd like to join the Patreon tribe, visit patreon.com slash michaelmercy. Lots of extras and rewards depending on the tier level that you select. Closing in on 100 Patreon exclusive videos which include reviews, real talks, and roundtable discussions. As always, feel free to share this and all the other Eight Days of Prey videos. Leave a thought in the comments spot. And to join the tribe, hammer subscribe. Nerd Mistake.